You see that reef over there? Well, obviously you can't miss it, can you? We're at low water and it's sticking right out. Yesterday it was high water and we watched a motor vessel get stuck on it. In this video, we're going to show you how to avoid that happening. As you saw in last week's episode, navigating in this area is not easy. Our charts were showing us any, anywhere between like 200 meters, half a mile out. So we had to rely on other methods to get ourselves through. Uh, this also happened in other countries. In the Red Sea, the charts were okay, but they weren't really good enough to do some of that very tight navigating. And maybe, maybe that was one of the problems that fella had on the rocks. Yeah, poor bastard. I mean, this whole area is covered in reef and it's, they'll, they'll show some reefs on the charts but they don't correlate with what's actually happening. Although to be fair, that guy had no excuse. He's sitting up in his fly bridge. Yeah. He had a very good point of view. Uh, but this is perhaps where satellite images would have been far more useful for him and it would have saved himself the embarrassment of having to be towed off by three fishing boats. Or having someone on the deck actually with polarised glasses on looking through the water. Anyway, yeah. yeah, well that's a good point. I mean, we're going to talk a bit about using satellite images to navigate, but of course the most important thing to remember is that it's all about this, Mark 1 eyeball. But satellite imagery can be very useful when you use it alongside your chart plotter. Mm. So in this extra we just want to talk specifically about a particular app that we have been using that we have been using almost constantly and in some cases it's become our prime means of navigation. Yeah even I have it on my phone and e I use it. Even Liz can use it's it. It's easy. Now of course some of you will be familiar with satellite imagery and navigating by it already. Perhaps you use um, something like OpenCPN that's uh, Windows, Linux or even iOS based that allows you to create CAP files. But of course not everyone runs those systems as their primary means of uh, navigation and, and we don't either. We have a proprietary system, a BNG system, which is our chart plotter. And then we have our particular app that we use separately held in a cradle next to it. And for me, I find this a uh, very simple way to navigate. You have your chart data in front of you to check the basics like position, rough positions of landmarks, uh, where you'd expect lateral beacons and so on. But at the same time, you can switch and zoom in and out of the app that's uh, right next to you. And in fact, um, we've been using it navigating by dinghy. <laughs> yeah, the first night we got here, mm. of course, we went straight to shore to talk to the locals, scope it out a bit, and of course find some beer. And at 10 o'clock we had to come back to the boat. Now you've seen all those reefs there, so between us and the shore there are reefs everywhere and bombies. And you'd think, okay, you're in a dinghy. Yeah, but they come above the water, so you've got to get it right. And on the way back at night, you took your phone out and you put this app on and we were able to zag, zig, zig and zag back to the boat safely. Yeah, really easy to use app. Okay, since we're talking about apps for phones, I guess at this point we should mention Ovital, o Ovital, Ovital, Ovital. O Ovital. How do you say it? If anyone knows how you say O V I T A L, <laughs> Ov <laughs> Ovital right. Maps is Ovital. what we call yeah. it, don't we? So uh, this is a similar app. It allows you to lay down uh, satellite images and just use that as a form of navigation. Um, the app that we are going to suggest is called All-in-One Offline Maps and it works in a similar way to Overtool but in my opinion it has far more advantages over Overtool. The only downside to the app we're going to recommend is that it is Android only. So if you don't feel inclined to buy a cheap Android phone to run this and you have iOS only then Overtool will serve your needs no problem. But as I say, I think this one is a far superior app. So what are these apps that we're talking about all in one and over to? Well, basically they just allow you to download satellite images from sources like Google and Bing. And similarly to a chart plotter, using your phone's GPS, you're able to see where you are in relation to that satellite image. Now we should be clear, they don't download chart data. So they are not a replacement for your chart plotter or your paper charts. Mm. They are to be used in conjunction with your chart data. Yeah. Yeah. 
Right, I think it's about time that we got out of this position here. We are swaying back and forth, left bit, and right. It's bouncy here, Ooh, isn't it? Going like this. Um, Jamie, I think you should go down below, get into your little hole down there, <laughs> and give everybody, all you guys watching, the real gen on how it works. Okay, so we're going to put our anorak on. We're going to get all nerdy now. So let's go down below and have a look at all-in-one offline maps. Go on then, bugger off. Okay, so we are in full nerd mode now. First thing you want to do is go to the Play Store and install all-in-one offline maps. Once you've opened up the app, the first thing you want to go to is your settings and that is the little button down in the bottom left-hand corner, the map with the two flags on it. Click on that, just go to settings. You'll see there's a whole load of settings, but the most important ones is possibly the distance unit and here you can set it to nautical miles and then perhaps the location format uh, lots of different options and we're going for degrees decimal minutes there is one other that might be worth checking out is storage location and this defines where you're actually going to save all of your satellite imagery on your phone when we come out of it the first thing we'll see is the info box that's the little information box in the top left hand corner this is really useful and it's always on display. The first thing you can see, of course, is your position. And underneath that is the scale of the chart, which will change, of course, as you zoom in and out. And there's a few other options there, but perhaps the most important one, the one that we use a lot, is the very last one, which is your measurement and bearing. So the way that this works is you can see currently we are where the blue dot is. Um, this will change as we start moving to a blue arrow. But if we wanted to get a bearing and a distance measurement of that island in the top left, we simply drag the screen over to it and you can see it's changed 771 meters at the bearing of 301 degrees. So that's measuring uh, the bearing of that island from the point uh, that we're sitting at. Very, very simple to use. If you get lost and you're scrolling away zooming in and out and you can't find yourself just simply tap the fourth button which is the green target button with the padlock just tap that and it takes you straight back to your current location okay so let's have a look at downloading satellite imagery really really simple again so this time we go to the second button which is your um, map layer and go to available maps and as soon as you do that, you'll see there is a whole load of different options here with expandable sub menus. You can see we've got Bing Maps and Google Maps and a whole host of others. So you just open up Google Maps, for example, scroll down to the one you want. And we're using Google Satellite and press the three buttons, the three little dots on the right hand side. And this brings up a window. Now, what you want to do here is add as layer, not display add as layer and the reason for that is because all-in-one offline maps allows you to switch between different satellite uh, imagery and in fact you can even combine two by changing the opacity of two different layers if any of you have used photoshop it works in pretty much the same way it just stacks layers so it's really simple to use just a, a note on the different types of satellite uh, options we're finding that at the moment in this part of the world bing is much better clarity for things like coral reefs and what have you than Google is but you want to download both of them because sometimes one is better than the other um, the other reason for having both of them is that as you start caching your into uh, your satellite imagery you can cache them both at the same time if you have them as layers there is one other layer that might be worth considering which we found quite useful and that is under Google if you scroll all the way down you go to Google roads and transit layer and this is like looking at Google Maps when you zoom in and you can see the names of shops. It will add in shops and resorts and possibly street names as well. Now we go to displayed maps. And these are all the maps that I currently have on display. And a quick glance, you can see that the current one that's on display is Google Satellite because that's showing at 100% opacity. Uh, underneath that is Aerial Map. That's our Bing map, which is set to zero opacity for the time being. Um, but you can switch these around. And this is where all-in-one offline maps really comes into its own. I really love this feature. So let's say we want to change over to Bing. So we can go to layer opacity that by clicking the three buttons, slide that down to zero, press the X button, so we go back, and now press the three buttons by aerial map, 
layer opacity and now bring it up. Now you can see straight away the difference between Google Maps and Bing Maps for, for this particular area. Okay, so here comes the fun part and that's caching the data. Now, in order to do this, as I said, you have to be online and the idea, the way this works is that you simply scroll and zoom in and out to the areas that you think you're going to visit. And it's actually quite fun when you're route planning to sit down and go through some of the satellite imagery and just uh, start caching it and checking out the potential anchorages that you might be visiting. One thing you want to do, make sure, is to download to the desired level. So let's zoom out and go to somewhere that I haven't yet cached. Now you can see these little smiley faces. That's showing you that it's lining up, ready to download. We've got a pretty good connection here. So if we wanted to take this as a potential anchorage, you simply zoom in. The smiley faces appear at the next level. Zoom in again. Keep going in until eventually you're down to the lowest level. Now the great thing with satellite imagery of course is that there is so much detail here so it is possible to zoom right down to single coral bombies and that's why we're using this app. And again we might then want to just run up the coast like so. I'm thinking of anchoring on this bay and you can see how quickly it's downloading those tiles. Now don't forget the way that satellite image works is that it's based on layers. So you have different zoom levels and you need to zoom into each of those levels in order to download the tiles for each layer. So what's great about all-in-one offline maps is the ability to change the saturation. And this is where it really comes into its own. And I'll show you how to do that. And in fact, what you're looking at right now is a Bing map with increased saturation. So all you do is you go to your layers go to your displayed maps, click the three dots by aerial map, in this case our Bing map, and we can go to edit color. And here you've got two options. You can change the contrast and the saturation. So if I just drop the saturation down to 100%, which is what it would have been, um, that's what a Bing map normally looks like. But by increasing this saturation, it really brings out the detail, and especially things like coral reefs. Okay, let's create some waypoints. This is pretty straightforward. All you need to do is move the uh, satellite image, drag it over to where you want to create a waypoint, and that's in the center of the screen. Now you click the third button, which is a flag, and we're going to create a place mark. And all you do is click the waypoint, give it a name, and press OK. And it's that simple. Uh, you can then edit that by tapping on that screen, and you've got the ability to press that bottom button there, and it shows you details and you can export that as a GPX, you can uh, change the details uh, or you can delete it. One thing that you can do is to change the flag or the icon for that waypoint. So you might want to change it to an anchor. So you just scroll down to transport. You've got a whole load of different uh, things to choose from. And I think under here, yep, yeah, it's Marina. Click that and you've created a, an anchor waypoint. One other feature that I really like is this. So we'll create another waypoint. And this time we can take a picture waypoint. And when we click that, it changes the camera to the camera on the phone. We take a photo. When you tap on that yellow flag, it pops it up with the photograph that you've taken. Now I've found this really useful for when we're going ashore and we find a shop that we do provisioning in I take a photo of the shop front and add it in as a waypoint. Another great feature, of course, is the ability to import and export GPX uh, file formats. In fact, there's a whole load of file formats, but uh, we use GPX and uh, it only costs a couple of quid. And we like helping the developers. So we bought that little plugin. So all you do is you go to your first button here, get more features. And here you can see there's a whole load of different plugins that you can buy. And you can see here, we've got GPX support. Um, and you can see they're pretty cheap as well. Two quid, 99 pence. Now, as I zoom out, you can see we paid for Andy Scott's Indonesian Cruising Guide GPX file. And if I zoom right out, you can see mixed among all of ours are all of Andy's as well, which are the purple waypoints. Very, very easy to import. 
So this is really great having this GPX ability. So uh, a lot of these waypoints are ours as we worked our way down the Mentawi Islands and we were able to just export them and we gave them to a whole load of people that were following behind us. Um, and so we were including things like f places to get fuel, for example, using the picture waypoint, taking a photograph of a fuel depot, um, which allows other people to see it. So it's just a really nice feature. And also GPX files, when they're compressed into one file, uh, are really, really small as well. So very easy to, uh, to share. Okay, so I mentioned Overtool earlier, and uh, if some of you are familiar with Overtool, um, you'll know that there are a few frustrations with it. Now, the main advantage, as I said, is that I think you can use it on iOS as well as Android, whereas you can't with this. But the reasons I found Overtool problematic was that you can't download it through Google Play. You have to side load it. It's developed in China. Now, if you're a bit uncomfortable about side loading an app, developed in China that hasn't gone through the official Play Store, then Overtool is definitely not for you. Personally, I don't have a problem with that, but I suspect that some of you may. The other issue is that the app is huge. I don't remember how much it is exactly, but to download it, it takes up a lot of room. But I think perhaps the main issue for me is that it is really counterintuitive. I just find the menu systems and the options very cumbersome to work my way through. Now this might be because it's been translated from Chinese, but for me, I just had problems with it and I just found it frustrating. As I mentioned earlier, downloading maps uh, is, is easier in, in some respects because you draw the polygon around the uh, island or whatever it is you want to download and you can leave it but it would take forever and I don't know why. Yeah, I just found it frustrating and I actually find the, um, the labor of zooming in and out on all-in-one offline maps much easier. One other advantage of Overtool over all-in-one offline maps is that you can record your track. You can't do that in all-in-one offline maps, but the developers have developed another couple of apps which could be worth checking out. I'm hoping that perhaps if they see this video, they'll understand that more and more yachts are using this. So the ability to be able to record your track would be great. Okay, there we go, nerd fest over with. It's just worth reiterating the amount of times that we end up using satellite imagery over chart data, especially in places like this area where not only are the charts out, but there are so many reefs within the anchorage that you have to keep an eye on. And as you saw that from the other day, that poor old Bionese motor vessel who ended up on top of one, that's a perfect example of where satellite data, satellite imagery, could have been really useful to him. I'm sure you've got your own ideas, you'd maybe use your own applications, perhaps you use CAP files, you run a system like uh, OpenCPN instead. I'd love to know what you think. Uh, also be interested to know if you think all-in-one offline maps uh, could be useful to you guys. Let us know in the comments. Peace and fair winds. As you saw in last week's episode, as you saw in last week's episode. As you saw in last week's episode, we weren't able to rely on the charts because there was a dip. We, as you saw in last week's episode, as you saw in last week's episode, why didn't you get it right and laugh? As you saw in last week's episode, as you saw in last week's episode, we weren't really able to rely on our charts. We were, they were, mm, fuck off. <laughs> oh God. I'm As you saw in last week's episode, it's not easy 